Welcome back to our video series for the Play Framework using Scala. We continue talking about testing and the testing for our first implementation of our task list. We left off with this nice controller spec that would instantiate a controller, in this case the application controller that we have, and call methods on it and make sure that they returned roughly the, the right thing, that it had the right contents in it. This works well unless you need some additional data. And there are just some types of testing. Basically, there are situations where you need to do kind of a full integration testing and you need to have your web app actually working. Now, obviously you can do that manually by pulling up the, the, the web app and running it, but we want to do that in an automated fashion. And there's a standard tool for, for doing this and it's called Selenium. And the Selenium uh, allows you to run either a real or a virtual web browser and interact with it in a programmatic way. And so I kind of want to run through the building up a Selenium test for our task list. Okay, and we said it when we wrote this in the last video, we couldn't test our task list this way because the task list has these CSRF tokens. And if you attempt to do that, you will get an error message that says the request doesn't have a CSRF token because our fake request doesn't have that and the uh, and we don't have the CSRF filter in place. So we're going to make another test here. I'm going to call it task list one spec dot Scala. And so we'll make a class with that name. As before, I'm going to extend the place, the play spec, but I'm going to add another few uh, elements in here as well. So juice, which is the injection, uh, the dependency injection library that we're using here. We have the ability to, on it, call either for running the server once per test or once per suite. I'm going to go with once per suite, so there is a single server that will be used for this entire suite of tests that we're writing here. We can also specify how many instances of the web browser are run. Are run. So I am going to pick one browser per suite as well, because I'm perfectly happy kind of opening the browser, either real or virtual. In this case, we're going to do virtual and having it uh, having it just be used for the entire suite in a row. And the last thing that I'm going to include here is the HTML unit factory, which is the the element that will actually create those virtual browsers uh, for us in here. So like with our other tests, I'm going to add a must directive here. And then I get to specify what the tests are. Okay, so what can we test in this? Well, our page for task list one looks something like this. Okay, so we have a login with get, which we just created to illustrate that we could do it, but it's not secure. A login with post, a create user, and then a uh, create user that used a play form as well. And if we go look at the code that generated this, here's the form for the get, here's the form for the post of logging in, here's the form for creating a user, and here's the form that used the uh, works with the uh, the play form uh, approach. Now, we did something in here that's actually going to cause us a problem for testing, and that is the fact that we didn't give any of our fields IDs. Okay? And not only did we not give them IDs, we made it so the name, username, and password are duplicated in all of these. This is a problem. It makes it very hard to specify which of these we want to use. Now, it's possible to specify it by kind of navigating the tree for the document, but that's a really bad way to do things because then if anyone edits the HTML for, for example, if they decided to wrap a div around this, 
there's a good chance that we would fail in our navigation. We don't want that to happen. If you have a page that is supposed to be tested programmatically, just like if you have something that is supposed to have JavaScript interact with it programmatically, it is good to put unique IDs on all of the elements that you might want to interact with. In this case, I want to interact with our logging in using a post. And so I am going to give so a username login ID there and an ID of password login. And down here I'm going to give for the version for creating user an ID of username create and an ID of password create. This way we will be able to specify exactly which one we want to go to, which is essential when we start interacting with this programmatically. So uh, if I just wanted to be able to log in on this, uh, must log in and access functions. Okay. I'm actually going to add a fair bit to this. So we must do that in the following code. So what can we do here? Well, we're actually going to go to the page that we want to work with. And we can specify that with a go to. And then we give it the string for where we want to go. HTTP colon slash slash localhost because it is going to run here on this machine. Now we might be tempted to put in port 9000 but it turns out that the way this test framework is set up it picks its own port to do the testing on. We don't necessarily know you know maybe something is running on on port 9000 maybe the the server is up right now my my server is up granted I'll take it down when I do my tests but it has to be able to check for different ports and we can't generically across all machines make an assumption of what port number would be safe. Fortunately, they give us a variable that was provided by uh, one of these imports here, or one of, well, it's an import up there and one of the things that we extended here. And so I have a port number that I can go to. And as we saw, the page is at login one. Now, since we've gone to this page, uh, how about we, so I want to click on the username field. So username login. So I'm going to, as I said in the comment here, I'm going to try to log in. And then I want to enter a value. So I'm going to say text field and I will username login um, dot value equals and our user that this works for is is named Mark. Um, you know, just after I go to the page, it's it's tempting to check to see if the uh, if things have been set up properly. Um, so we could go look for elements on the page to see if, if they are correct. Uh, we'll hold off on that for now as we come back in the next video and do that. For now, we'll just click on the password login and set its text field. You can see why I needed unique IDs for these things because if I have multiple If I have multiple fields that all have the same name, then we would run into problems and this should, yes. Uh, note that, for example, for click on, if you read the documentation for this, it says that it checks for IDs first and then for names. So it will work with names, but it would really help if the names are unique. Names don't have to be unique, but IDs do. And so giving them unique IDs is, is helpful for this. 
just to, I mean, this isn't actually testing anything yet, uh, but we've written a bit of code. Uh, so it's probably not a bad idea to just try running it, make sure that it compiles and that it's happy. And so if we run test, it'll go through. It'll compile our code. And of course, it's running all of our tests right now. Since I'm not testing anything in this one, of uh, task list spec one, we got an error on. So there was a broken pipe that failed on this. We'll come back in the next video and we'll explore what's going on here and uh, work to fix it.